guys and welcome back to my channel it's a really really nice day today um, we've not had one of these for a long time and I was starting to wonder whether the Sun had actually just disappeared out of the sky so last time I posted a video we were just having storm Dennis and everything was wet everything was um, being blown around everywhere it was just an absolute mess and to be fair it's still really wet everywhere um, last week we had non-stop rain and wind all week um, and today is actually the, the first nice day that we've had for a long time so I'm hoping this weather's going to stay with us although I have just had uh, a yellow warning for snow um, appear on my phone but um, we don't usually get snow around here so I'm hoping that that's not true well I would love a snow day actually but um, yeah maybe just one day we'll see I don't think it's going to happen anyway um, so what I wanted to talk to you about today is my um, new growing area which is adjacent to this polytunnel. I wanted to plant into it last year but I was a little bit late to the party with it and um, I tried to direct sow into it and it just didn't work. Um, so this year I'm going to do it properly and I'm going to take you along with me um, because I, when I first started doing this I was searching around for videos of how to set up flower beds from scratch in a grass field and I didn't really find anything that was that helpful so hopefully if I can take you through the process of going from a grass field um, into some productive flower beds then that's going to help you or anyone that's looking to set up flower beds or even vegetable beds from scratch in a grass field. excited about when you're a farmer. A nice big pile of poop. So the reason why I chose this area to begin with is because obviously it is adjacent to my polytunnel and um, there is no room to expand in my first flower field which is that triangle shape that you've seen before on my videos. This area is quite well sheltered by this big long wall here um, which protects the muck heap or just keeps the muck heap up. Um, then we've got a bank around the back over there that um, we had built after the flooding in 2007 to protect us from flooding and then we've got the polytunnel here so I think that it is quite a sheltered site here and I think that it will be good for growing flowers in so um, as you can see it's quite a large area and the first thing that I want to do is measure it so I know what I'm working with this measuring wheel is from Amazon it's been really handy helping us plant things, planning fencing, planning flower beds, planning how much weed membrane we need. Really handy tool for accurate measurements. So initially, um, at the start of last year, um, we sprayed off the grass and the weeds that were in that area that I want to grow in. And I don't like using sprays and I haven't used sprays at all in my front flower field, but this just seemed the only way for me to get it cleared quickly so that the, I could bring the tractor in to get it ploughed and para harrowed. So, sorry, my dog's digging. <laughs> Good off. She's looking for the mice that might be in here. So yeah, the quickest and easiest way that I could think of was to use glyphosate to kill off 
the weeds and the grass that is in here. In my other flower field I just got it rotivated um, on the grass and then I covered the beds up for a few months um, and then I proceeded to use the no dig um, method where I used cardboard and compost but this area is 360 metres squared and I don't have enough cardboard for th using that method um, so I just want to get it done and then I'm not going to be using weed killer after that. So after a couple of weeks of the grass and the weeds being killed off, um, Rob came in and ploughed it and then he came in with the power harrow and got it down to sort of like a nice tilth. Um, and at that point it was I think about May time and I was thinking I need to get these seeds started and the only option that I really had was to direct sow at that point and I didn't actually lose anything by use, doing this method because I was just using the leftover seeds that I had so I stringed it all out and I just direct sowed all of the seeds and to be fair it sort of worked and we had quite a few sunflowers, we had loads of dill which worked really well, the cornflowers worked really well, direct sun um, but we also had a bit of a dry period at that point and I don't think that many of the seeds managed to germinate very well so I won't be direct sowing again and it was sort of like a last ditch attempt to just try and get a few more flowers for the year last year. But what we're going to be doing this year is I'm going to get Rob to just spray it off again and power harrow it. We've got a nice big pile of quite well rotted horse manure so we've got loads and loads of horses and donkeys on our farm which produce more poo than you could even imagine and our muck hill is massive so we've been putting aside some of the nicer, nicer stuff and I'm going to be spreading that out on the field and then I'm going to be adding a little bit of compost just to improve the soil structure too because it is quite clay soil around the back. This is the muck heap I was telling you about. It's huge! This is my nice big pile of poop that I've been saving. What a treat. <laughs> it's funny isn't it, the things that you get excited about when you become a farmer or a gardener. My husband comes home and he says, I've put aside a really nice big pile of poo for you and I'm like, yes! And he gets total husband points for that as well. Anyone else might be a bit offended. So this is my current setup in the greenhouse. Um, I know that I did a video previously on soil blocks on capillary matting, um, which I think was going to work fine, but somebody suggested this method to me, which was growing plants in soil blocks in these Tupperware trays. And I just think that it is going to work a lot better for us. So these trays have 40 soil blocks in them each. So if you compare two of these, which contains 80 soil blocks to one of these which has 84 cells look how much space that takes up compared to that so look how many more plants i can get started off on my heat mat um, so this is why i've switched onto this method because i bought a second greenhouse uh, last summer and it hasn't been put up yet so i need to be able to fit two flower fields worth of plants in this one greenhouse so this takeaway tray method is going to save me a lot a lot of room and i'm hoping that i can produce all of the plants that i need by using this method here i'm just going to show you how i plan my bed so you've seen me out in the field taking measurements field measures 30 meters by 12 meters so if i just draw a rough rectangle here then we can do a rough draft of the field plan so what i've done is i've measured how wide my weed membrane is going to be that i'm going to be covering my beds with and i've measured the metal um, template that i used to cut out my holes for planting in so my weed membrane is about 1.6 meters wide 12 meters divided by 1.5 makes eight so i know that i can have eight beds along this edge of my field and then 
obviously I don't want 30 meter long beds all growing the same thing so it makes sense for us to chop our beds into thirds so each one is 10 meters 10 meters long by 1.5 meters wide so that gives us in total 24 beds so I know that I can get nine inch spacing i can get 13.1 plants per meter squared and 12 inch spacing i can get 10 plants per meter squared so what i need to do next is to make a wish list of the, the flowers that i want to grow in my field around the back so what i did was i went on mole seeds and i've looked at which varieties i want to grow and I've written a list here. So then I've looked at what plant spacing I want them to have. So if, for instance, the dahlias um, and the sunflowers and some other things, I want those to be spaced 12 inches apart. So I know that I need to have 120 dahlias per 10 meter by 1.5 meter bed. So it's all about just calculating how large your beds are what your plant spacing is going to be and um, then you can do the maths and find out how many plants you need per bed and then you can go on the seed websites and make sure that you're ordering the right amount of seed so you might have to order three or four packets of certain things or you might have spare of some other things which is just what happens but then you are not wasting your money by buying too many seeds or you're not having to go back and buy those things again when you realise you've not got enough. So when I've got my seeds delivered and I'm ready to sow them, I will make a checklist of how many seeds I need to sow and I always sow extras just in case anything happens and I can go along and I can tick these off to make sure that they're sown um, and I can write down what date they're sown as well so I've got a note of this in my notebook and I can make a notebook every year and I can make notes on what's worked and what hasn't whether it was worth sowing a particular variety in February or whether I should have waited until March for example so it's really really handy to have notes and workings and things and then if you ever make a mistake or something doesn't work you can look back at your notes and figure out why so today and yesterday I did the majority of the sewing and I had my lovely helper Tina here on Monday we had the heater on in here and it got really nice and toasty had some music on had a chat sowing seeds it's really my favorite time of year I just love getting on a mission and getting my seeds sown and it's all of the the excitement about the year to come and you're sowing your seeds and you're thinking about what they're going to look like out in the field and what they're going to look like in bunches and people's wedding flowers and it's just a really um, exciting time of year and you, and you feel like this every year in Gaza gardening um, which is just it's a really nice feeling and, I'm, and this is why I love my job so much because um, it's being able to start again every year and try new things and there's no failure involved in gardening it's all just learning and moving on to the next thing that's going to work better for you in the year after so these are all the seeds that we got sown this week there's thousands of seeds here i think there's about three thousand or four thousand in here altogether. so i've got about four or five hundred left to sow today so i'm just going to crack on with that and i'll see you again next week so thanks a lot for watching my videos and giving them thumbs up and the comments that you leave. It's really nice to hear back from people who are viewing my videos. So thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.